Welcome to Polygon. I am Charlie Hall, and today we're inside of a game called Elite Dangerous. It's a space faring game, and we're actually joining a player led expedition called the Distant Worlds Expedition. And here with us is one of the organizers of that expedition, a player who goes by the name of Dr. Kai. Hello, Dr. Kai. How are you? Hello, Charlie. Very good. This is probably one of the best weeks of my life. Dr. Kai, you are the leader then of, or one of the leaders of, what's being called the Distant Worlds Expedition. Um, and I, I want to get a look at the, the whole group of players that are here, and I want to meet with them. But you mentioned that you wanted to, to start heading on down towards the surface. Why don't, we, why don't we start doing that, and then you can tell me more about what the distance world, Distant Worlds really is. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, why don't you follow me? Match Sounds my good. speed. I'm going to go to about 290 meters per second. If you can't keep up with that, let me know. All right. But if you follow me now, we're going to head down. Okay, so Distant Worlds Expedition is um, a player-led event. Um, it started off with just Eremus and myself. Eremus is uh, another commander. He was actually the pilot who got here first and made, made news, basically, back in the day of being the first person to cross the galaxy um, and discover this planet called Beagle Point. Um, so yes, Eremus invited me to tag along with him. He was going to do it again when Horizons came out, which gave us the ability to land on planets. Right, um, Horizons, of course, this, this big... Uh, change to the game that allows us to do well what we're about to do, which is land on a uh, atmosphereless planet. All of the 400 billion star systems in Elite Dangerous you, that don't have atmospheres on their planets, you can land on those planets. Yeah, pretty much. Um, if they've got water or lava, you can't still, but that's all going to come eventually. Oh, cool. Okay. So yeah, we um, we were going to go, and then. Uh, we decided why not post in the forums um, and see if anyone else wants to come along we can maybe start a small little group and uh, it snowballed quite quickly at first it was 50 then it was 100 and then it was 200 and frontier started getting interested themselves the the, the developers of the game yeah. and they started promoting it for us and uh, putting it in the newsletter and then we had 300 and then we had 400 then we had 600 we started getting a bit nervous at that point because we were worried that pirates might start trying to tag along to create some havoc um so we closed the roster then but we allowed another 400 people to sign up to uh be unofficially part of the group so we ended up at about a thousand and since a then a thousand players the yes we started oh off goodness. with a thousand players now what's what's interesting about elite is that the player density by and large is very low because you know you're working from yeah. five four four hundred billion star systems but you know what yeah. kind of of numbers have you been able to get into the same instance of the game for these travel sessions well we did break a record and break the servers when we were at uh, the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy um we reached 100 and i think it went up to 106 although we can prove 100 up 101 um commanders in a single instance and that was quite a feat and i actually got a uh, a message on Twitter from one of the programmers of the game telling me off saying don't do that again because we uh, we actually ruined the game for like half the community. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. So we're so not doing it again because we are nice chaps, but um, 101. Generally speaking, we get about 30 people into instance um, and yeah, when we land at the waypoints at the set times, uh, generally you get about 30 people in an instance and it forms like a party and people have fun, come up with a whole bunch of games and a whole bunch of interesting things to do. So you mentioned that you, you passed through the supermassive back hole that's been modeled to some extent. The, you know, astrophysicists believe that that's what's at the center of our galaxy, so Frontier put it there. But, you know, what have been the other uh, waypoints, the other points of interest that you've encountered along the way? Oh, that's a good question. Um, nothing, basically, uh, the first six waypoints were actual base, like actual real astronomical objects that have been put into the game. Uh, the Omega Nebula, the Eagle Nebula, um, the Lagoon Nebula, the Fine Ring Nebula, basically all nebulas. Um, and beyond that, you start getting into the procedural part of the game and there's less uh, real astronomical objects. So we've basically selected interesting locations or iconic locations in the game. Um, for example, one of the waypoints was what's called Rendezvous Point. Mm -hmm. When Commander Eremus made his first trip, he actually made the game news because he 55 or 56,000 light years from home, he bumped into another commander. The odds of that happening are ridiculous. So it became a very famous uh, 
rendezvous and the, we landed there just to sort of celebrate that and i believe actually frontier are actually going to rename that point to rendezvous point instead of its procedural name so that's always good that's fantastic. That is just fantastic. What has the support been like from the folks at Frontier? You mentioned that you were getting uh, getting hate mail from one of the developers on Twitter. But, uh. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I didn't want that to be the only thing I say about Frontier because Frontier have actually been with us since the beginning and they've given us literally as much support as they possibly can. I speak to one of the community managers every day and he's actually tagged along. He's now part of the expedition. He made it all the way himself, um, caught up with us. Uh, we were already on the other side of the core. So already about seven or eight weeks in and he just caught all that up in like the space of a weekend just because he was so amazed by what was happening and he wanted to be part of it um and we've had david braben the uh, ceo and founder of frontier developments um tweeting about us like quite often i've actually sent him a free mug and apparently he's quite <laughs> chuffed about that um, <laughs> wait a minute and... you guys have your own mugs for the yeah, we've got all kinds of merchandise. <laughs> people love having that sort of stuff we've got a logo and it's beautiful so we just stick it on anything like patches and badges and mugs and t-shirts and everyone's just buying it like crazy it's great that's fantastic um, well of course the folks at frontier have been kind enough yeah to provide me with uh, some resources of course when i first got this game but they've also been kind enough to move me directly to you guys now i've i've done my fair share of exploration in elite since i started playing the game but you know for instance i spent yeah. the better part of a month moving a thousand light years outside of the civilized bubble to, to get my stripes as a explorer. You guys have moved many, many times further than that, and you've spent a lot of time in game. So I've got a lot of respect for uh, for you that have made it this far. It's it's a dangerous journey, and man, what an accomplishment, frankly. Thank you. Yeah, we've moved 80 times further than that, uh, and, and a lot of people, this is their first ever expedition. So I'm really proud of everyone. I'm really amazed by everyone's achievements. Who other, uh, what, what other notable participants do you have? I, I believe that there's another in-game group that's joined you to some extent called the Fuel Rats. Yes, the Fuel Rats. Um, okay, so let's go through them. The Fuel Rats, starting with them, they are um, a group of uh, commanders ever since the ability to transfer fuel to another ship um, was introduced in the game. Uh, they they form this like uh, emergency rescue service so if anyone ever runs out of fuel they can uh, call the fuel rats and they would go and rescue them and they had some very famous results i believe you've already interviewed them mm -hmm. um and yep they're with us in great number their leaders are with us um because this is exactly the kind of thing they enjoy wow. uh, yeah the rock rats the rock rats are a group of um player uh, it's a group that's actually formed out of distant worlds uh, they've come together to provide a service that wasn't there previously in the game um and they've basically uh become experts already thanks to the way the mission works basically they scour the planets in and around the waypoints looking for the special materials that um, can be used to synthesize what's called jumponium which the community have called it um, it's basically a material that lets you jump further and that is very useful for us explorers trying to reach beagle point because beagle point is a bit too far for the standard jump ranges of most ships so they've been and they've also performed some rescues some people while crossing the abyss have got themselves um, They've done a jump that required some japonium, and then they couldn't find any more and got stuck, couldn't leave. Well, tell so me a little bit about tell me a little bit about the abyss while we're mentioning it. The the Milky Way has all these little spiral arms, and yeah. as I understand it, you guys are kind of leaping from one spiral arm to the other, and that area is referred to as the abyss. Yes, on the far side of the galaxy, um, there's two arms, and uh, in between them is is a gap, and there there are also gaps. Oops. There are also gaps um, on our side of the galaxy, but for some reason the one on this side is much thinner. And that's a bit of a scientific anomaly for the people in Elite. But basically, yes, it's this very, very... It's called the Abyss, and the name describes it perfectly. The stars are so thin, and people it's very difficult to get through. And there's plenty of places where you can get stuck, and it's, it feels very desolate. It's a very creepy place to be. <laughs> and so you've kind um, of been... And, uh sharing resources and, and rocking and, and accumulating resources to kind of help other players that don't have as naturally a, a long uh, light speed jump range to, to kind of catapult them over the abyss. Yes, because that's the way the game works. You jump from star to star and if the stars are too far apart, some people just can't make it unless they have this special material called jumponium. That's fascinating. Yeah, and uh, also the last few jumps because Beagle Point is deliberately as far as, well, as far as Eremus could reach back back when he first came. And you can go a bit further now with this special jumponium, which wasn't in the game back then. 
Um, and as you can see, we're approaching the landing site. We're about 80 yeah. kilometers out. We can already see some lights from some ships. And I believe there's a gathering down there. Well, um, some people have arrived early. For example, I've arrived early. The actual official arrival date is on Saturday, the, uh, the 2nd of April, which is exactly, almost exactly 12 weeks after we left. Mm. Um, but yeah, we've all started arriving. Right now, people will be arriving. When you, I believe, when you started the game just now, um, you saw a whole bunch of people arriving yourself. That's what it sounds like you were describing. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of a uh, bunch of um, super cruise trails were were flying around. It was actually hard to get a lock on you and your yeah. wave or your wing beacon because there were so many other contacts in the area. That's that's not something that usually happens to me when I'm playing Elite. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually on the galaxy map right now and I'm looking at it and I can see a whole trail because I've added basically everyone to my friends list and all the markers on the galaxy map where all they are. Um, I can see like about 50 markers, some of them way back at the previous waypoint, and there's a whole trail leading up right to us. So I believe most people will arrive by second. So um, then tell me a little bit about Beagle Point. It, uh, you know, to the untrained eye, this looks a hell of a lot like Earth's moon. Yeah, well, it's just a standard planet. So let's take a look at some of the stats. I can tell you it's got low gravity of about 0 0.17. Um, and that's G. compared to Earth, so. 0.17 of Earth's 20%. gravity. Wow, that's really low. Um, and it's a thousand kilometers across. Uh, well, no, sorry, thousand kilometers in radius. Um, whereas Earth is more like six and a half, six point seven thousand. Um, and that's yeah, it's quite cold. And you can see a mountain range in front of us. We've actually named that Sanctuary Hills, Sanctuary Hill, not after of the one in Fallout 4. I think Aramis just like that name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, where those people have landed is is the actual base camp, and we've named the base camp Darwin's Legacy. We've named all the base camps after some famous explorer in history, because basically, um, we're explorers, and most explorers by nature are lone wolves, and uh, we'd be going out into the dark together. Not sorry, I said that one. We'd be going out into the dark alone. That's the whole point. And who comes to the forums and shares some tales? But basically, everyone's just used to being alone and Distant Worlds has changed all that, it's changed the game, it's created a whole new level of interaction in this game and a whole new level of like cooperation and a whole bunch of games have come out of this and we've actually been showing people who live in the bubble which is where humans are mm -hmm. and where most of the people players reside like you know right by home and we've been doing stuff that even they don't do we've become more of a community than the actual communities you know what I mean I know what you mean. Sorry. So I was looking at, ooh, here we go. It looks like the ground's coming up on us here about 20 kilometers out. I, um, I was looking at your schedule of events, and um, I don't know. It just kind of seemed like uh, like what we'd call here in the, state, in the States, like a little summer camp that you guys have for this yeah. week. Can you talk a little bit about the events that you have scheduled for this week, week that you're here? It's a week-long set of festivities. Everyone's exhausted, and everyone is elated by the absolute intense achievement that we've, we've achieved. And it is an achievement because so many things can go wrong. So many things can mess up and getting here is very difficult. A lot of people, you know, made mistakes and blew up. So everyone's really happy. So we decided to celebrate with an entire week of fun. It gives other people a chance to get here if they were behind. Um, and we've got a whole bunch of games going. We've got a wedding, which is in the MMO world, nothing new really. But someone's going to be getting married here. I believe Ed Lewis from Frontier is going to be conducting the wedding. Um, and you might want to pull up soon so you don't hit the ground. I accidentally so, hit the uh, boost there, so <laughs> not the way okay, I wanted no. to. Just don't do that again. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, we've got a game called Wacker Rat, which is basically that mountain range in front of us called Sanctuary Hills is about 30 kilometers away, and okay. in an SRV it takes about 40 minutes to get there. So we're going to have a game where um, some SRVs, which is the buggy in the game by the way, is going to mm -hmm. drive there. Um, they're going to have a 10 minute head start and then people in ships have to go and try and find them and blow them up. We're going to have a distraction derby, we're going to have a game of tag, we're going to have um, an endurance race on a nearby planet, I believe, possibly in another system. And I've got some videos on my channel uh, recording some of the previous uh, races and they're probably the most fun thing that we do. That's and, fantastic. Uh, yeah. So I believe there's some other stuff going on but I can't remember offhand. As you can see, we're now at quite the gathering here. Um, I count about 20 ships. Look at everybody all around here. Yeah, this is what a typical gathering looks like. And we've got another person pulling up to our left. Hello um, there. He's obviously just arrived, and that will be the, the story for the next week or so, I guess. People arriving bit by bit. 
Let's see if there's anyone famous here. Well, in my book, the white roses everybody that made it here is famous. This is just yeah, they're gonna be incredible. Well, oh, by I'm the way, gonna... yes. Now I was just going to say that you called me a leader at the beginning. I'm just an organizer. I'm probably, you know, I do probably the most work compared to all organizers, maybe except for Aramis himself. But there are no leaders. That is for sure. That's fabulous. Um, let me just type into the local chat to give you a welcome. If you don't mind. Not Can at I all, please. You I'm... As the reporter that you are. Yeah, please do. Yeah, the Wanderer is my is my captain's name, but I'm Charlie Hall from Polygon, obviously. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to set it down here. I think in the after this uh, this uh... wow, I don't even know what that's called. Is that a an anaconda? Which yeah. one? The yellow one. The yeah. yellow one in the middle is is not an anaconda, is it? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. Thank it's you. it's so funny though. You never see the the ships really all together, and. Uh, you know, you're never able to compare their scale. <laughs> oh, if you've got an SRV, get out and drive onto the Anaconda. You'll be I've, blown away. It's about the size I've, of four peels. I brought um, four of them, so I'm definitely going to get out and drive around. Chat, by the way, you're getting many salutes. Hello, everybody. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm going to try and set her down here so, before, so that I can officially say that I've landed at Beagle. Yep. Yeah. to find a nice flat spot to do it. Okay, I see, I see a viper. Unsuitable terrain. I see a python, I see all kinds of ships, yeah. There we are. That looks alright. Little blue dot, little blue dot. You're getting plenty of welcomes. I made it. <laughs> Touchdown. Well done. Fantastic. I am going to deploy my SRV. What the hell? Yeah. We'll be able to talk to other people in SRVs as well. Oh, but they excellent. won't be able to talk to us. Okay. Unfortunately, the game hasn't reached that level yet. So you were talking, I'm sorry, you were talking a little bit about you're going to have a wedding? What yeah. You're going to have a, a wedding. Not, you know. There's going to be a couple of commanders having a roleplay wedding in at Beagle Point. Everyone's interested in setting some kind of record, I guess, and they want to be the first people to get married at Beagle Point. So <laughs> we want to facilitate everybody's dreams in distant ones. That's fantastic. I am right behind you. Yeah. Oh, this guy's just arriving. Huh? Yeah, there's going to be plenty. It's beautiful, oh, isn't that's it? So. So you, right now, you've got a small base camp, and then some of the surviving members of this thousand ship flotilla are just dropping by one by one for the first time. Yep. And for each one, what of an them. amazing! Oh, that's Star Lancer. He's the one who's made the distant worlds medallions. <laughs> what a, what a fantastic moment for each of these travelers to finally make it here and to, to be able to, to greet them is just fantastic. Yeah. I wish I could um, explain to the viewers just what kind of an achievement this is. This is a ridiculously difficult thing to do. And the fact that so many have made it just goes to show their dedication. And I have to say, every single person who has spoken to me um, to tell me how they've experienced, how they've enjoyed the trip have all said, not just that they had a great time, but that it was the best experience they've ever had in a game. So um, I don't really, I can't really put into words how that makes me feel, but it makes me extremely happy extremely happy a lot well, of people start this game they're quite lonely it's hard to meet people in the game and now everyone's got a whole bunch of friends that they went across the galaxy where they did the most amazing things oh did you hear that explosion i did what was did that did you see it <laughs> it looks like no someone, it was right in front of me someone just blew up in their srv <laughs> oh, no. i don't know how that happened well now That's when you it. blow up in an srv though you go back to your ship right yes. okay and you don't get your srv back which is yeah, kind of of course that's why i brought back four back. of them <laughs> yeah. Good job. Um, so, uh, what was I going to ask you? So, but this is not. Oh, this guy looks like he's pr hurt pretty bad. Hey, come on, we're all friends here. Um, the bumping, um, by the way, it doesn't do any damage. It's all part of the fun. Okay, good. As long as you okay. put your shields on, which you do. <laughs> I do. Yeah. So then, this has not been the safest trip for for a number of the reasons that you've already described: the distance, the danger, having to refuel, having to make it across the abyss with the help of your neighbors. My God, that's a big ship. Um, but yeah. what are some of the other dangers that you've had? Are are there pirates out there? Um, not 
NPC pirates, but there are player pirates. Um, there have we have had a couple of incidences of people, especially in the open server where anyone can join, uh, of people going a bit crazy and starting shooting up. No one's actually died that way, thankfully. Um, and there's always the potential that there are some people stowed away um, here among us. Um, some people hidden, yeah. in the in the flotilla that have bad but, intentions. Yeah, and uh, trust me, if there's a chance to make the newspapers, even if it means you know, like because they were the one that blew everyone up or particularly blew Eremis or myself up or some of the other more famous people like Zulu Romeo or some of the live streamers or Ed Lewis, then yeah, they're going to do it. And that's why actually I'm going to dismiss my ship while I'm in the SRV so no one can go and just blow it up. <laughs> precautions, that's not precautions. a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, are you, where are you? Oh, you're not right behind. You're right. I'm just kind of making a circuit here. I'm over here by the, uh, mm. the, the beige colored, uh, smaller ship and the the white asp yeah we actually might get a game a of uh, galactic tag extreme going which is a, basically a game of tag high speed buggy tag where plenty of people end up blowing up um yeah as for other dangers uh some of the dangers people have encountered have been gravity um fatigue and like falling asleep at the wheel exactly sure. like forgetting to throttle back <laughs> and crashing into a star uh, um Windows updates suddenly taking control of their screen and then them being pointed at the ground at high speed and not being able to recover. That's happened a few times. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're saying that Windows 10 has caused havoc here on the or at least one largest person, and yeah. longest human expedition into the Milky Way. Yes. Can you imagine? <laughs> You've spent... Could I imagine? Like, you spent literally... Of course I could imagine. Uh, it took me... I've, I've looked at my game time. It's gone up by six days since I left. So I basically spent six days in the game. Not all of it traveling, but six days down the drain. Can you imagine if you if I got blown up now? That would just be horrible. That would be horrible. Oh, here's the carcass of the guy who blew up. Oh, yeah, right over there. It looks like we're seeing a, a very large anaconda landing right here. Who is this guy? Commander Luke Antro. Welcome, sir. Yep, he's uh, he was one of the people that helped organize that famous star formation that set a record and made the press. When we were at the uh, supermassive yes. black hole, he helped me organize it. Was that the one that got you hate mail from Frontier? Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't call it hate mail, more of a friend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we actually got Did a never lot do of that again. from Frontier as well because we we did we broke records and we you know we we painted the game in a very very good light, which is always good. I want to yeah. get more people playing this game if I can. People doing flips showing well, off. I've just got a own. few more minutes today that I can spend with you before we got to call it quits nope. and I have to go back, oh. sadly, to the real world. Oh, my goodness. Somebody I tried to up. jump <laughs> that ship. That was you. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the problem. The problem is, uh, unfortunately, when, you, um, when you're in a big instance, then the physics goes a bit haywire and even the tiniest bump can blow you up. So that's what happened to me just now. Gotcha. Oh, well, I've only got one SRV left, but it was fun. And now I can uh, publicize kind of things that happen <laughs> so go on oh yes i i really just want to thank you for for inviting me to join you guys you know like i said i i don't feel like i've earned the trip here but it's it's just so wonderful to be welcomed into this community and, and i think that you've done amazing things you and the other folks that are helping to organize the distant worlds i think you've done amazing things for this elite community and, and for you know for, for folks like me that get to cover it i'm very happy to be here and, and thank you again you're most welcome and it's been an honor having you with us and oh please the the privilege the pleasure and the privilege is all mine this is really fun oh thank you